Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a post-emergency department night shift coronavirus update. Haven't done one of these uh, for a, a little while, um, but people seem to enjoy these. And I'm working the next couple nights, so I'll probably do a couple like this. Uh, interesting times here in the emergency room. Very, very busy. Lots and lots of COVID patients. Our hospital is full of patients, and, and many of them have COVID. Um, before we get started with that, a little introduction. My name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency physician. I've been doing some video updates about the virus since it started way back. I think our first video was maybe end of February, early March. And I've been trying to do these things a couple times a week. Uh, for a long time, I did them daily. But anyway, some of the times I do them after my emergency department shift to give people an idea of kind of what's been going on. As usual, if you like these things, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. I usually start these off with the numbers and the numbers, you know, are keep going up. 23 million cases worldwide, uh, 808,000 deaths, 5.8 million cases in the U.S., 179,000 deaths. Here in my little state of North Carolina, 155,000 cases, 2,500 plus deaths. Now, interestingly, the numbers in North Carolina have been slowly improving. Our case positivity rate was dropping, but it's been steady, steadily around five, somewhere between five and 7%. It hasn't dropped as quickly as I was hoping it would, but hospitalizations have actually dropped. Um, as of yesterday, there were 898 hospitalized COVID patients in the state. On the 28th of July, there were almost uh, nearly 1,300. So the numbers of hospitalized patients have dropped. However, apparently nobody told that to our hospital because last night, not only were we completely full, all the beds in the hospital, all the COVID beds, all the intermediate care beds, all the ICU beds, um, but this, we actually had the most COVID patients I think we've had since the pandemic started. So um, I think right now in the hospital, there's something like 24 or 25 uh, active COVID patients. We actually intubated somebody last night. We've had some very sick people. So where I'm at, it doesn't seem to be quite following the trend of everybody else, but other ER doctors locally that I've talked to um, in the last week or so have, have sort of started noticing that our COVID numbers are dropping. Again, not here, but uh, everywhere else. And, you know, that's one of the things when we look at data, you know, sometimes your own perception you know, is goes against what the data shows. So I can't, you know, if I were to, if you were to ask me, I would say cases are getting worse, but in actuality, it looks like cases in this state are getting better. Um, crazy night, no beds, had to transfer a lot of people. It makes it very difficult for everybody when there's no beds because wait times are very long. Staff is frustrated. Patients are frustrated. We can't get things done. The doctors are like, why are there all these people in the waiting room? Get them back. But there's no beds to put them in. There's no staff to take care of them. So it's a, you know, it's a huge cluster and we hate it. Um, and that's what it's been like. And, and uh, apparently it's been like that all weekend long. I want to talk a little bit about convalescent plasma. Now, if, if for those of you that have been watching me since the beginning, I do want to say that I mentioned convalescent plasma, I think in like the second or third video as a possible treatment. Now, what is convalescent plasma? Well, the idea is that if I have COVID and I and I mount a strong immune response, I'm going to produce these antibodies, particularly these neutralizing antibodies that will bind to the virus and will just, you know, mark the virus for destruction. Now, if I've had it and somebody else gets sick, you could conceivably take my plasma and separate out basically just the plasma. That's just the, the sort of the, the fluid and these antibodies and some other, other things that are in the plasma, inject it into somebody else and my neutralizing antibody should neutralize the virus in somebody else. And so it's a treatment that's been used for a long, long time, you know, probably more than 75 years and the question from early on was, was it useful or not? And, you know, Trump just made a big you know, fanfare about doing an emergency use authorization uh, yesterday. Now, you know, in this time of year, is it politics? Is it science? It's hard to tell. So let's look at the science behind convalescent plasma. And right now, the data is mixed. The best study we have is out of the Mayo Clinic. They studied 35,000 patients. And what they found was an 11.9% mortality rate of the patients that received convalescent plasma after four days of being really sick 
and only an 8.7% mortality rate in those who got it before four days. So it does seem like people that get convalescent plasma early benefit and it looks like there's a reduction in deaths. Now, unfortunately, no control group in that study. So, you know, not great. Um, there's a few caveats. Um, these patients were all less than 80 years old. None of them were on a ventilator. So when, you know, Trump says there's a 35% reduction in mortality, yeah, based on this one study, there's been a few other smaller studies, one that didn't show any benefit, another one that was stopped early because the researchers thought maybe there were some problems that patients were having related to the plasma treatment. So definitely not definitive. It should work on paper. I think the more exciting thing, are, and we've talked about these several times, are these antibodies that, um, you know, are artificially produced antibodies against the virus that you could conceivably make and then give somebody who's sick and they would work right away without plasma or anything else. And there's a couple of those that have some pretty promising results. And I think that might ultimately be a better solution. But at least convalescent plasma, you know, does seem to be having some effect. And so that's good. You know, the other question is like, does antibodies, you know, does it make you immune or not? And I actually posted on our Facebook page, this article about this fishing boat. It's kind of fascinating, right? So this fishing boat went off and there was um, 122 uh, crew members and they were gone for not very long, 16 days when a bunch of people started getting sick. They came back and they tested everybody and 104 out of the 122 had caught COVID. Now they'd all been tested and were negative before they left. I think everybody but two. Um, so clearly there were some people that were had early infection or one or two people that had an early infection that was pre-detection, right? And we've talked about how you, you might be able to have the infection and not be detectable on testing for a couple days afterwards. Um, and whoever that, that small number of people were, were, were infected the entire crew. Now, of the, um, so 85% of the crew got infected. Of that 15% that didn't get infected, three of those had positive antibodies when they tested them beforehand. And so they had those neutralizing antibodies. And those three that had those antibodies did not get sick. So, you know, it, it's, it's sort of pre-release and it hasn't been peer reviewed or anything, but it's really interesting, right? The three people that were known to have antibodies did not get sick. And there was basically an 85% chance of you getting sick if you were on that boat. So conceivably one of those three should have at least probably two of them should have gotten sick, but none of them got sick. So that's a, a tantalizing clue that antibodies do provide protection. So we're going to cross our fingers and hope that that's true. Um, it's been a long night. I'm tired. I'm going to go home and go to bed. I'm back here again tonight. Um, I will do another update later in the week. Uh, and I've got some more videos that are coming out. We've had some, some issues with our videos lately, mainly um, probably my fault because of time constraints and um, the fact that I'm just not really good at, at producing these things. Anyway, everybody, as usual, wear your mask, your mask, wash your hands, look after yourselves, look after your family, look at those, look out for those around you. I'll be back soon. Stay safe. Have a great night.